Goes right back court for Owens. Kellerman on the other side to Herbert on the left sideline. Inside, Hobson popped the ball up. And it was blocked away by Smith. And we have a foul called on the inside. Michael Payne, his first. The Hawkeyes have been man to man, full court, and on the half court. So the foul called against Payne, and Smith goes to the line. And they're going to give him a shot. He'll get two, as a matter of fact. First one up is no good. Some justice. Interesting statistic in the first half. Idaho shooting better than the Iowa Hawkeyes, but barely, 41.4% to 40% for the Hawkeyes. Both free throw shots are down. It's 36-25. One was down anyway. Boyle, 15 feet away, good. And it's 27 to 36. Hawkeyes deficit now nine points. 18-25 left to go in the basketball game. Owens with the ball in his own zone, in the lane, spinning against Carfino on the dribble, gets it across the line, goes left, backcourt for Kellerman. He's being guarded by Kenny Arnold. Herbert on the left backcourt, high up to Hobson, to Kellerman, back to Owens. He shoots from 17, no good, and Carfino called for a wraparound foul against Kenny Owens. And that'll be four on Steve Carfino. Kenny Owens has failed to score from the, the field, but he does have six for six from the line. 36-27 is our score. Idaho leading by nine points with 18.03 left to go in the basketball game. I want to make one correction. In the first half, we said Kellerman had three. Originally, the official score just gave him two, although the scoreboard on the side had three listed. So it looks like he just has two. Owens hits the first one, makes it 37-27. Idaho Vandals by 10. Their largest lead has been 12 points. Second shot also good. 38-27. Hawkeyes in dire straits with 18.03 remaining in the basketball game. Greg Stokes is checking in for Steve Carfino. Now that'll take some defensive adjustments because Payne and Stokes are going to be in there and the guard quickness will be down a little bit now with Arnold and Bobby Hansen at the guard position. So the lineup for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Bobby Hansen, Kevin Boyle, Greg Stokes, Kenny Arnold, and Michael Payne. On the right foul line extended, it's Kenny Arnold with the basketball, holding it above his head. It's Michael Payne at the head of the circle. Down deep for Boyle, fall away baseline, jumper from seven, goes in. Excellent shot by Kevin Boyle. Good rhythm on that baseline shot. 17.43 left to go in the game on WHO Des Moines. 38-29, Hawkeyes down by nine, and Arnold commits a foul on the full court press against Gordy Herbert of Idaho. That's Kenny's first foul, but it is the team's fourth foul. Team fouls now at four to zero. Disadvantage to the Iowa Hawkeyes. We have a timeout on the court, and we'll keep it right here. We'd like to tell you that the National Youth Sports Program is dedicated to expanding opportunities for the nation's economically disadvantaged young people. NYST also... But the Hawkeyes have just not taken care of well. It's when the Vandals are on offense, the back door of the alley-oop series. They've gotten a number of uh, easy shots there, and also the loose balls. It seems like every loose ball, the Vandals are able to get to much quicker than the Hawkeyes. But the Hawkeyes are there. They're not reacting quick enough to just grab it and go with it. The Vandals have been much, much quicker as a team on loose ball situations. Let's check on the scoring for a moment here. Boyle for the Iowa Hawkeyes right now has 10 points. Ironically, he is the leading scorer for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Payne with five, Hanson two, Arnold two, Carfino six, Anderson with two points. For the Idaho Vandals, excuse me, Mac Hobson has 11 points, Calvin Smith seven, Gordy Herbert six, Kenny Owens eight, and Brian Kellerman with six points. Play back in. Kellerman with the ball, being guarded by Arnold. 17 and a half minutes left to go in the basketball game. Hawkeyes trailing by 13 at 38 to 25, and Hobson takes the alley over Kellerman. About the third time that's happened in the basketball game, and it is now a 40 to 29 basketball game. And that's just what we talked about. The Hawkeyes have not made the adjustment. Part of it is the freshman kids that have not made and looked for that back door. Right side. Michael Payne misses badly. Hanson fighting for the rebound. It's a jump ball between Herbert and Hanson, and the Hawkeyes get it on the alternating possessions rule. When you're trying to stop the backdoor series, you have to see the ball at all times. Once you turn your head, you cannot see the ball. And you have to see the ball and play position on your man to keep him away from around the rim. Right in front of us, Hanson inbounds. Gets it to Arnold, now Boyle. Now Arnold taking the ball on the right foul line extended. Head of the circle, Kevin Boyle. Left wing, Hanson drives in, pops, and hits. That's only Bobby's fourth point. 
but it's very, very needed. And the Hawkeyes deficit now just nine points at 40 to 31. 16-40 left to go in the basketball game. Kellerman, Herbert, Owens all being pressured, but finally Owens has it into the forecourt for the Idaho Vandals. The Hawkeyes have picked up more fouls against them than steals on that full court press. Kellerman in the left backcourt. 16-25 remaining in the basketball game. Owens now at the ball between the circles. Goes to Herbert in the right backcourt. Head of the circle. Herbert stops. Goes to Hobson. Executes a reverse pivot. Tries to spot Smith inside. And Stokes picks off the basketball. Gives it to Kenny Arnold. Kenny Arnold dribbling on the foul line extended far side. Reverses it to Hanson. Hanson on the left foul line extended. Has Payne inside. Goes up strong. Gets the bucket. A good duck under move by Michael Payne that time. Stokes and Payne are really going to have to work on both ends of the court to get the Hawkeyes back into a positive situation. Herbert in his own zone. Pass knocked away by Boyle. And Boyle tried the shot and is blocked off by Herbert. He recovers. Shoots it down to Kellerman. Kellerman from 13 feet on the right side of the lane. Tries a bounce pass across the court. Picked off by Boyle. Ahead to Kenny Arnold. Who lays it up and in. Hawkeyes back. Down by five. Full court pressure in Floyd once again. Arnold on Kenny Owens. We have 15-27 left to go in the basketball game. Owens between the circles against Kenny Arnold. Hawkeyes down by five. They have been down by 12. Smith, right high post. Shot hit. Nine points by Smith. 15-09 left to go. 42 for Idaho. Iowa with seven left at 35. Payne, head of the circle, into Stokes. Power move, turnaround, chopper, good! Stokes gets that three-point play opportunity. Big play for Greg Stokes as the whistle blew as he was in the air and the shot decided to fall in. 42-37. I think that's the biggest bucket of the game so far, Max. They're in the game, now have to just keep their patience, keep their poise, and come at them in the same manner that they have. They cannot get excited and try and still get these points back in a hurry. That's only the first foul this half against the Vandals. Greg Stokes, not a really hot free throw shooter, hits 56%, but he's good enough on that one. 42-38. Hawkeyes pressing. They've got the momentum. They're hungry. They were down by 12. They're down by four right now. Meanwhile, Kellerman tosses it up the court across the line. Goes right sideline for Owens. Down deep to Hobson. Tries to execute a reverse pivot. Owens will try to set him up once again as he circles back outside. Around the horn he goes for Herbert. Ball knocked away by Boyle. Recovered by Herbert on the left back court. Quickly to Owens in the lane. Right side. Hobson free. He shoots. It's no good. Rebound Hanson for the Hawks. Hawkeyes could cut the Idaho lead to two with 14-29 remaining in the basketball game on WHO. Payne, head of the circle, steps again, power move, good! Oh, it wouldn't fall. It would not fall. He was about 10 feet inside the lane. His shot rolled around the rim. It wouldn't fall, but he drew the foul. Excellent inside play. Excellent inside play. Getting to Stokes, as we've talked, being left-handed is a positive situation for the Hawkeyes. Oh, I don't know what Lute Olson told the Hawkeyes in the locker room, but they are playing immeasurably better here in the second half. And their full court press is starting to come together. Well, they've come out with full court pressure, which has really been the momentum turnaround. The Hawkeyes are playing much more aggressive than the Vandals. Okay. Greg Stokes hits the first one. Go ahead, Matt. And we have seen that happen in the reverse during the last three or four weeks of the season where the Hawkeyes sometimes will be very aggressive the first half and conservative the second half. Second shot also good. And now... The Iowa Hawkeyes down by just two. They were down by 11 points about four minutes ago. Arnold and Payne double-teaming Owens. Arnold can't recover the ball. Snapped out between his legs, out of bounds. But Idaho is intimidated, and we have a timeout on the court. Our score, Idaho 42, and the rapidly resurging Iowa Hawkeyes 40. Now this for Northwestern Bell. You know traveling will cost you a turnover on the basketball court. And it costs you plenty in business, too. Remember, the ticket could be sitting right there on your desk. Long distance. It's the way to get things done today. Our sponsors for Iowa Hawkeye basketball all season long on WHO are Northwestern Bell, the Peaster Station, AGI, and American Federal Savings and Loan. That last foul for the Vandals was Smith's fourth. So he has got to go out, and it is Kriege that will be in the lineup for the Vandals. The Hawkeyes' pressure really have turned the momentum around as far as the flow of the game. The freshman Stokes and Payne have the confidence now that they can work on the inside game and take it to them. We have Arnold and Hanson in the lineup with Stokes, Payne, and Kevin Boyle, who has played an excellent game again in the tournament. He has 10 points, six in the second half. Three minutes, 45 seconds ago, the Hawkeyes were down by 11, and now they're down by just two. 
Inbounding, Herbert against Boyle. Gets it to Kellerman in his own zone on the far side. Hanson taps it out of bounds. So, Idaho will inbound on the far side. Full court pressure by the Hawkeyes again. Herbert gets it into Kellerman. Kellerman in his own zone between the circles, being guarded by Arnold. Gets it across the line for Hobson. Right side, Owens drives down, dishes it off for Herbert, and it's picked off by Kenny Arnold. The Hawkeyes have the ball, a chance to tie. Payne, top of the key. The Hawkeyes have never let in this basketball game. 14 feet away, it's no good against the heel of the rim, and a rebound foul, reaching over, called against Michael Payne. He's dancing around, he's frustrated. I'll tell you, once in a while, and Michael Payne has this disadvantage when you're 6'11", even if you go straight up sometimes and take the ball away from somebody in front of you and just grab it without touching, it looks like a foul. The official thinks you must have touched him if you can take it away from him. Gordy Herbert will inbound on the near side against Kevin Boyle. He's looking, looking, finally gets it to Owens in the near corner in his own zone, and as he releases, the pass is picked off by Michael Payne. Pressure Payne has, makes them in. Pressure has really bothered the Vandals. They have not kept their poise for the last five minutes. Thirteen and a half minutes to go in the game. Payne with the basketball, 17 feet away. Goes left side to Hanson. He shoots. He hits! Bobby Hanson baseline, his favorite shot. And we're even at 13.28 to go in the game at 42 all. Idaho with the basketball. Herbert tries to take the baseline against Hanson. Comes back outside, throws it way back out in the left backcourt for Brian Kellerman. 13-13 left to go. The Hawkeyes in this basketball game, they once trailed by 12 points. In the lane, Herbert takes the pass as he cuts down. Parallel to the baseline. Misses the shot, gets the rebound, kicks it outside to Owen. To Kellerman, 17 feet away. He shot from the top of the key, no good. Bobby Hanson has the rebound, and the Iowa Hawkeyes on this possession could take the lead for the first time in the basketball game. Right side, Boyle. Right foul on extended, Kenny Arnold. Cuts down, hits Greg Stokes. In the lane to Boyle, back outside to Arnold, 15 feet away. His shot rolls around the front of the rim, falls away, and the rebound brought down by Hopson ahead to Kellerman. Kellerman leaves it off for Owens. Owens goes left backcourt for Kellerman, and the Idaho Vandal cheerleaders are trying to encourage their Vandals to get the lead back up once again. We have a whistle away from the ball, stopping play, and a foul will be called of some sort. Kenny Arnold holding Kenny Owens low along the block area. That will be his second in the team six this half. Steve Carpino will be checking into the basketball game for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And it'll be Bobby Hansen sitting down. Bobby Hansen so far in this basketball game has six points. I'm sure it's just to give Bobby just a couple minute rest and you'll get him back in. The Hawkeyes with full court pressure are expending a lot of energy. Herbert launches it to Kellerman between the circles. Kellerman controls the play, goes left side to Hobson for Idaho. Down deep, Owen, cut off from the baseline. Back outside, the Vandals go on the perimeter with Kellerman. Kellerman being guarded by Carfino. Left foul on extended for Hobson. Left baseline, it goes for Owen. He circles back outside, spots Hobson. He beat Payne. He missed the shot. Foul called anyway. It's going to be on Stokes, and that'll be Greg's fourth foul. Hobson has beaten Stokes and Payne inside all afternoon. He has long arms, excellent jumper, and he gets the ball when we front, and then it's weak side help that has to be there, and many times today the weak side help has made the foul. We have 12 minutes exactly to go in the game, and Hudson puts the Idaho Vandals up by one point once again at 43 to 42. Hobson has 14, 15 make it now, a 44-42 basketball game, but the Hawkeyes very well off compared to what they were at the start of the second half. Stokes, his shot blocked away, left side of the lane, and the foul, I believe, will be called against Hobson. Looks like maybe Kellerman. Oh, Kellerman's got the foul. The foul is against Kellerman, his third. Team fouls now at three and seven. Iowa with the seven, and the Vandals with the three. It's a shooting foul, though, for Greg Stokes, and he steps up to the line for the Hawkeyes. Stokes in the game has seven going for eight. He has two shots. We could tie it right here. First one up and in. Greg has made four free throws in a row. Doing a lot better than he did back on Friday night. Just couldn't find the eye on the bucket at all. Second shot, no good. Rebound fought for. Hobson coming up with it. Throwing some elbows, and Kevin Boyle is holding his body between Owens and Hobson and gets the foul. And that's four fouls on Kevin Boyle. Let's check the foul situation, Max. It's not good. Kevin Boyle, four. Steve Carpino, four. Greg Stokes, four. For the Hawkeyes, while the Vandals have just Kelvin Smith with four. 
11.47 remaining in regulation. Our score right now is Idaho 44 and the Iowa Hawkeyes 43. The winner of this game meets the winner of the Pepperdine-Oregon State game coming up later here at the Performing Arts Coliseum in Pullman, Washington. And the Vandals will be shooting 1-1 the rest of the game. Owens, first shot good. 45-43. Owens now in the basketball game has nine points. And all of them free throws, nine in a row. That's a pertinent statistic. Oh, and second shot, good. The Idaho Vandals outscored the Iowa Hawkeyes from the line in the first half by six. That gave them the majority of their 10-point lead. That tells you something about how well the Idaho Vandals can shoot free throws. They were 9 of 10 in the first half. Iowa with the ball, medium post, silk far side to Steve Carfino, then goes on this near wing to Arnold. Arnold holding the ball above his head. We have about 11 and a half minutes to go in the basketball game. Hawkeyes with the ball. They are down by three points. Payne tried to spot Stokes or Hanson inside. Pass tipped away by Priggy of the Idaho Vandals. And Steve Carfino will inbound the ball underneath the Ida Iowa basket. Bobby Hanson is in for Kevin Boyle now. So Hanson has his two minutes worth of rest, and he's back up ready to go. Kenny Arnold directing traffic. Right foul on extended. Hanson shoots from 17. No, Stokes the rebound. He tries to go on. I guess Greg Stokes, I believe. It's Stokes against somebody on the Iowa team. It is against Stokes, but it was not a foul. Greg Stokes locked up, went up, and they called him for reaching over. Oh, my, that hurt. That really hurt. Greg Stokes, who was doing such a magnificent job here in the early stages of the second half with his short, sweet turnaround jumpers in the lane, has fouled out of the game unofficially with eight points. And what is going to hurt is the confidence that Greg was playing with. Now you have to bring somebody in that's cold. And certainly the jumping ability and the power of the inside of Greg Stokes, where they're able to get the ball inside, is going to be missed. Now you're bringing in Craig Anderson, so Craig will be probably playing the, the rotating post with Michael Payne. And yep. again, the quickness now of the Vandals may hurt the Hawkeyes. Greg is really going to have to concentrate on position. Craig Anderson just a step slow in the Iowa Hawkeye scheme of things, but he's in there anyway. Owen, first shot. Good. And that is 11 in a row. If we keep mentioning it, maybe we can jinx him. 47-43. We've got 12,000 fans to fight against, Mac. You're forgetting that. Yes. Second shot, also good. 48 to 43. 11.08 left to go in the basketball game. The Hawkeyes, once tied, now down by five. Anderson, head of the circle. Right foul on extended for Steve Carfino. Carfino on the right back court to Hanson, head of the circle. Back to Carfino. Tries a shot 15 feet in, dishes it off to Payne instead, and we have a foul called against Idaho. I believe against Herbert on the inside. Hawkeyes again can keep looking inside, get him in foul trouble, and do a very effective job because you've got Smith out of there with four fouls, and he has been a, a, an individual who has taken care of the middle. The foul called instead against Pete Priggy of Idaho, and that'll be Priggy's first foul, one of the rare substitutes that the Idaho Vandals put on the floor. Team fouls at four and seven. Hawkeyes still at the basketball. They haven't put themselves into the bonus. Hanson inside draws another foul from an Idaho player. So gradually, the Iowa Hawkeyes are working up toward the bonus. Strong move that time. Looks like Lou Olson is going to use maybe Michael Payne and Bobby Hanson as the rotating post people because Bobby plays very well with his back to the basket. He goes up strong. is an excellent jumper. And have Craig Anderson play the wing. And the foul will be called against Herbert. Herbert. That's his third. Five team fouls on Idaho. And, of course, the Iowa Hawkeyes have put Idaho into the bonus. Meanwhile, at the line, Bobby Hansen strokes the first one through. He has seven points going for eight right here. 48-44. Get there. No good. Payne saves it. Gets it to Carpino. What foul line extended? Between the circles for Arnold on the right foul line extended. Anderson guns from 17. No good. Rebound. Owens has it in the far corner. Retreats, picks it up, and leaves it off for his teammate Kellerman. Kellerman on a 45 degree angle now backs off and now crosses the line near the center circle 10 24 left to go in the basketball game close across court pass to Owen medium post near side Hobson up against the glass too hard rebound Carfino for the Hawkeyes 10 15 left to go down court to Arnold Arnold at the near hash mark head of the circle Craig Anderson other side it goes to Steve Carfino of the Iowa Hawkeyes back outside Carfino hits Hanson Dr. Carfino uses a pick from Hanson. He shoots from 15. It is no good. The rebound, front four, and Hobson comes up with it. With Greg Stokes out of there, the Hawkeyes have gone to perimeter shooting, which is not what will get him back in the game again. Lou Olson said, if we have to go to outside shooting, we'll get beat. Owens driving the lane. 
misses. Herbert popped up no good. Payne tries to save it from going out of bounds. He couldn't do so. Hawkeyes are playing that man-to-man -man defense. I'm sure we'll see Kevin Boyle back in here in just a few minutes. We have a timeout on the court. 9.42 left to go in the basketball game. Performing Arts Coliseum in Pullman, Washington. We have a barn burner here. 9.42 left to go in the basketball game. The Idaho Vandals 48 and the Iowa Hawkeyes 44. And through this game now in the first 10 minutes and 18 seconds of the first half. Idaho shooting 39%. The Iowa Hawkeyes improving to 46%. But Greg Stokes, as we have mentioned, is out of the basketball game. Idaho with the basketball as action resumes. Owens has it between the circles. Being guarded by Hansen. Goes left foul line extended to Priggy. Back to Owens. Priggy on the left wing. Gives it now to Owens. Right wing it goes for Kellerman. Kellerman takes a dribble. Looks for a pass. He has Herbert head of the circle. Goes right wing for Hobson. Hop dribble back outside to Priggy. Semi-delay game along the perimeter for the Vandals. 9-17 left to go in the basketball game. Hawkeyes trailing by four points on WHO. Between the circles, Kellerman traps. Goes right wing to Owens. He's free, won't take the shot against Hanson. Back outside to Kellerman, and the Idaho Vandals set the whole thing up again. Kellerman with the basketball right now for Idaho on the right side. To Owens, top of the key. Left back court, it goes to Herbert. Baseline, Hobson, uh-oh, blocked the wall against an Iowa Hawkeye. Every time Hobson gets inside, it seems as if an Iowa Hawkeye has to grab hold. He's a strong jumper, as we indicated, with long arms, and once you get in baseline position, he's either going to get the basket, or you're going to have to foul him. We'll Two shots coming up here for Hobson. We were talking here, the Vandals do look tired out there, but they've gone to this delay offensive game, which gives their people a chance to rest while on offense. Leading scorer now for the entire game has 16 points as he strips the first one. Here comes the second one. He crouches, he's up, he tosses it up and in. 17 points, mostly on inside stuff. It is now 50 to 44. Hawkeyes trailing by six points with 8.44 left to go in the basketball game. They have the ball. Carfino pops from 18. Bingo! Good kick out pass by Bobby Hanson. Took it low. 8.35 left and quickly down court. Kellerman trying to hit Priggy and it was knocked away by Michael Payne at the last instant. Out of bounds. So Idaho retains possession. They lead by four, Mac. Zone underneath the Iowa defensive backboard. Right sideline Hobson. Right foul line extended for Owens. Circles around the horn. Now they've gone man-to-man. -man. Herbert with the basketball right now. One bounce. Goes to Priggy between the circles. Kellerman head of the circle. Left side. Hobson driving in. Puts it up. Shot blocked away by Payne. Guess what? Here comes a foul again against an Iowa Hawkeye. Bet this against Michael Payne. And that'll be four on Michael. It's four on Boyle, four on Payne, four on Carpino, and Stokes is gone. Hobson, during the regular season, was not the leading scorer for the Vandals. He was, as a matter of fact, just the third leading scorer at 12.7. But all their people, all five starters, average double figures. Extremely balanced, but no depth. Hobson has 17. He missed the foul shot. 50 to 46 remains our score. 8.33 the time remaining in this basketball game. Second shot coming up for Hobson. It is no good. The rebound by Payne. He missed both. Hobson missed both free throws, and the Iowa Hawkeyes could have a four-point turnaround this Right here on this possession, Anderson hook shot left side is good. A baby hook by Anderson, took it in the middle of the lane. Left-handed hook. 8.05 left, Hawkeyes down by two. Priggy around Carfino and Payne, who shot from 10 on the left wing, no good. Semi-fast break for the Hawkeyes. Arnold driving, puts it up, and in! Cut the basket! Cut the basket, and a foul will be called against Kellerman. It may be on Kenny Arnold, charge, it is. Kellerman was moving with Arnold. And the charge is called against Kenny Arnold, even though both players were moving. And it's going to go the other end, one and one. And Kellerman, 70% free throw shooter. If they miss, it acts like a turnover. Hawkeyes will get it. That is the third foul on Kenny he, Arnold. He didn't. And Kellerman converts, makes it a 51 to 50 score. He'll have one more coming up. 7.53, the time remaining in this basketball game on WHO Des Moines. Our score, Idaho 51, and the Iowa Hawkeyes 50. Now this for AGI. Mike Lee along with Mac McCausland. This is Iowa Hawkeye basketball on WHO. The Hawkeyes down by one point after once having trailed in the basketball game by 12 at 25 to 13 with four and a half minutes left to go in the first half. 
They have been tied a couple of times here in the second half. First of all, at 42 all at 13.28 to go. And then just recently at 7.53, matter of fact, the time on the clock right now, they were tied at 50. But Kellerman misses the second of his free throws, and the rebound is brought down by Michael Payne. Hawkeyes can take the lead with a bucket here. It'll be the first lead of the game for the Hawkeyes if they get it. Kenny Arnold, right foul line extended. In the circle to Michael Payne. Right foul line extended, Kenny Arnold. Medium post, Hanson, back out to Arnold. He shoots, it's no good. Tapped up and in by Craig Anderson. Craig Anderson. Again, Craig does just absolutely, his works within his limitations, his abilities, and does a very good job. He's that, probably the best position player Iowa has. That lead comes at 7.28 to go in the basketball game. The first one the Iowa Hawkeyes have had, and Anderson has unofficially six points. Points number five and six, giving the Hawkeyes the lead. Carpino slaps the ball away, recovered by Kellerman for Idaho. Approaching the seven-minute mark to go in the game. Hobson, near foul on extended. Head of the circle, it's Kellerman. Dips right, goes left, throws it to Owens, who cuts down. Almost knocked away by Kenny Arnold. Owens goes left, foul on extended for Kellerman. Right side they go with Herbert. Top of the key, Kellerman uses the pick by Herbert, and Carpino falls on Brian Kellerman in an attempt to block the shot around the pick. Carpino went for the ball, fake, went up in the air. Kellerman just ducked under, and Carpino came down on him. Kept and a boy. standing ovation for Steve Carfino, sophomore from Bellflower, California. Well-deserved, well-deserved ovation. Carfino retires from this game with eight points unofficially. But now it hurts the quickness situation again. Steve Carfino, the quickest player Iowa has, is out with five fouls. Kevin Boyle in. But still, you look at the Vandals. If the Iowa team can keep the pressure on them, they are tired. And uh, you might have a, a great opportunity to get a couple more turnovers. Smith is back in for the Vandals, and he has four fouls. So the lineup for the Iowa Hawkeyes right now that Carfino and Stokes have fouled out as Kellerman hits the first one. It is Boyle for the Hawkeyes, along with Arnold, Michael Payne, Craig Anderson, and Bobby Hansen. 52 all. And Kellerman misses, so we still have a tie game at 52. But falling out of bounds with the basketball, Payne couldn't grab control of it. Now he's up. I think he's okay. Had the rebound, but he slipped and he fell out of bounds. The ball belongs to the Idaho Vandals. We're knotted up at 52, 644, time remaining. And Herbert tries to inbound, and it's knocked away quickly by Kevin Boyle. So we'll inbound it once again. 6.43, time left in regulation. Idaho with the ball. Herbert to Smith, back to Herbert, far corner. Dribbles his way out of trouble, throws it way back on the right backcourt for Kellerman. Kellerman being guarded by Hanson, now goes to Owens. Left foul line extended. Smith with the basketball, fakes the pass inside, throws it back outside to Hobson. Right wing goes to Herbert. Herbert dribbles left, stops, looks for a pass, bounces it low for Smith. He goes up in. The basket counts between two Iowa Hawkeyes, and the foul will be called against an Iowa Hawkeye for certain. I believe it'll be Michael Payne, and that'll be Michael's fifth foul. The two freshmen have gone. Maybe Jerry Denard. Three Iowa Hawkeyes have fouled out of this basketball game. First one was Greg Stokes. The second one was Steve Carfino. And now Michael Payne has left. The situation, I wouldn't call it bleak, but it is somewhat troublesome. It is troublesome. When you look again, the only positive thing at this point is the fact the Iowa Hawkeyes will be playing with reserves, but they will at least be fresh. The Vandals, if you look at them, are having their hands on their knees. They are tired and getting up and down the court. We have a momentary delay as the Idaho coach, Don Munson, instructs his players. This delay, of course, is normal because the team which loses the player has 30 seconds to get a replacement in. Into the game, Jerry Denard, just as you thought, Mac. What can Jerry Denard add to the Hawkeyes? Well, he is a quick jumper on the inside. He has not had any experience in a tournament situation at the NC2A level, but he should have an opportunity now to really work inside and go up and get some inside moves. Smith gets his 11th point at the line. It's 55-52. Time remaining, 6-19. Arnold with the ball for the Hawkeyes on the right foul line extended. Top of the key, Craig Anderson. Right foul line extended for Arnold. The Hanson, 15 feet away in the lane. Back outside to Arnold. Turnaround jumper. Good by Jerry Denard. Just as soon as he comes in, seven feet away. Cuts the Idaho Vandal lead to one point with 6.02 left. That's where he plays very effectively on offense. The biggest problem Jerry's had is adjusting the defense. We'll see how he does here. Left hash mark. Bill Hobson with the ball. And back outside it goes for Owens. Owens dribbling to Kellerman near the center circle. 
being dogged by Hanson. Kellerman drives down, stops. Leaves it off for Hanson, left wing. I mean, for Hobson, left wing. Now back outside, it goes to Kellerman, who is being dogged by Hanson. Hanson falls down. He's back up. Kellerman still at the ball, and the Iowa fans take a five-second call. Should have been made there, but the referees are doing the counting, and they have the law in their own hands. And now a foul called, or a traveling violation, rather, against Kelvin Smith. And Jerry and Smith was on the left wing, and it, he was looking for a pass outside. Jerry Denard flashed at him, and Smith just rocked back on his heels and traveled. Here's a chance for the Iowa Hawkeyes to take the lead. Once again, Anderson, head of the circle, right foul line extended for Kenny Arnold. Arnold still at the ball. He better get rid of it. Takes a couple of dribbles. Now between the circles for Boyle. Right foul line extended for Kenny Arnold. To Jerry Denard in the way. Drives down. Puts the shot up and it's badly off. Missed badly on the shot from 10 feet left side of the lane. Rebound Smith for Idaho. Leaves it for Owens. Idaho's Vandals with a one-point lead. 55-minute mark to go in the basketball game. Owens to Kellerman in the right backcourt. Go ahead, Max. Vandals are coming out in their delay game. They bring everybody on top of the free throw uh, line area extended and have all five people out here away from the basket looking for backdoor cuts. Now with the ball, Kellerman right backcourt for Owens near the center line. Owens left backcourt it goes for Herbert. 4.30 left to go in the basketball game. Herbert looks for a pick. Has Smith. He dribbles back outside and near the center line. It's Kellerman. Kellerman starts the drive, now stops. Right next to him has Owens. Owens being guarded by Hanson. 4.15 time remaining in the basketball game. Left backcourt. Herbert starts the drive. Tried the pass, almost knocked away by Boyle. Back outside it goes to Herbert. Idaho still has the basketball. Kellerman with the basketball between the circles. Kellerman drives, stops, taps. Away by Jerry Denard on the pass to the left wing. Jerry Denard, he has a couple of big plays. In the first minute of play, he hit a basket, and he's tapped away a pass. And the Iowa Hawkeyes have the ball, and we have a timeout on the court called with 3.50 left to go in the basketball game. The score right now is Idaho 55 and Iowa 54. We'll be back after this for American Federal. <laughs> And we're all back at the Performing Arts Coliseum in Pullman, Washington. The Iowa Hawkeyes doggedly getting back into this basketball game. They've lost three people due to fouls. Greg Stokes, Steve Carfino, and Michael Payne. But they're still only down by one point, and they have the ball. The NCAA awards 90 postgraduate scholarships worth $2,000 each to student athletes who have maintained at least a B average during their years in college. And with the presentation of this year's 20 scholarships in basketball, the NCAA has awarded more than $1.6 million to more than 1,300 male and female student athletes. This message presented by the NCAA. All right, the Iowa Hawkeyes coming out with Jerry Denard, Bobby Hanson, Boyle, Arnold, and Craig Anderson. As we've talked, Payne is fouled out, Martino is fouled out, Stokes is fouled out, and we have 350 to go. We'll see if the Hawkeyes go delay game or not. Here comes a big possession for the Iowa Hawkeyes. I pray they don't try to get it down for the last shot. Right foul line extended for Kevin Boyle. They are going to wait and see what the Vandals are going to do, see if they can find an open hole. They are working their half-court offense. Arnold left foul line extended with the basketball, holding it above his head, being guarded by Kellerman. Takes a couple of dribbles parallel to the baseline. Can't use the high post pick from the bar. Goes right wing for Boyle. Top of the key, Hanson jumps, shoots, no good. Tapped out on the rebound by Boyle to Hanson. Left wing goes to Anderson. Back to Arnold. On the left foul line extended. Head of the circle, Jerry Denard. To Arnold on the same wing. 3-12 left to go in the basketball game. Hanson takes the basketball. Right side of the key to Boyle. Medium post, far side. Denard banks it off the glass. Too hard. Rebound. Anderson puts it up and no good, but a foul will be called. Again, Craig Anderson gets excellent offensive rebounding position on the offside. And the Vandals, you can see where we talked in the first half, got all loose balls, deep rebounds, have missed three opportunities to get some loose balls. And the foul will be called against Bill Hobson of Idaho, only his second foul. Hobson's been the guy that's been burning the Hawkeyes underneath. He has 17 points so far. And that's 16 fouls for the Vandals, so the next one will put the Hawkeyes in the one and one and they'll be all equal in that area. Craig Anderson, the guy who gave the Iowa Hawkeyes their only lead at 52 to 51, is at the line with two shots. First one up, good. We have a tie at 55, 302 left in regulation. Craig Anderson, who until this year did not miss any free throws, in his college career. Second shot, it's up. No good. Tapped up by Denard by Anderson. Good play by Jerry Denard, the junior college transfer from California. What a great story for the substitutes that the Hawkeyes can pull this off. Right foul line, right back court, Boyle. Now to Arnold. Boyle 
And it's a perimeter game on the way outside near the center circle with Hanson. Arnold with the ball right now. And Boyle on the opposite wing. 2.38 left to go in the basketball game. Arnold to Boyle on the right backcourt. Back to Arnold. He's moderately double teamed. Shaking his way down to the right wing. And Boyle with the basketball on the pass. Loses it out of bounds. Not quite, though, because the timeout has been called. So Boyle just merely places the basketball down on the floor as we have a timeout. We'll take a timeout, too. Tell you we have 2.28 left to go in the basketball game. Our score right now is Iowa 55 and the Idaho Vandals 55. On distance, it's the way to get things done today. Iowa on WHO Sports Radio coming to you from Des Moines is brought to you by Northwestern Bell, the Peaster Stations, AGI, and American Federal Savings and Loan. What a game we've had here so far, Max. It has been excellent. And again, it could be a great story for the substitutes to come through and bring the Hawkeyes from behind. If you talk about momentum and looking at swings, the Vandal team themselves look tired, look a little flat, and look you know, a little concerned about how they lost the big lead, and the fans are a little quiet now. Boyle in for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 2.26 left to go in the basketball game. We have a tie at 55. Arnold still at the ball. Out near the center circle for Hanson. Leaves it off for Kenny Arnold in the left backcourt. He's trapped. It's Hanson on the near hash mark. Left corner, Jerry Denard. Hands it off for Hanson. Hanson, double team. Elbows his way out of it. Hits Arnold on the left hash mark. And now Arnold dribbling near the center circle as he comes out. Hits Anderson on the right sideline. Goes to Arnold. He's driving down. Has Denard open. But the ball is kicked out of bounds by Kellerman. And an alert defensive play by Brian Kellerman of Idaho. The Harry Denard had the open shot right underneath the basket, Mac. It'll be a timeout, I believe, by Idaho. 1.59 left to go in our basketball game. The intensity level is building. Now this for Peaster. <laughs> Mike Lee along with Mac McCausland at the Performing Arts Coliseum in Pullman, Washington. Mac. The Hawkeyes have the ball underneath their own basket. What will they try to do here? I'm sure they're going to try and use their half-court offense. They will not go to their four-corner. They will go to a delay and look for the good shot only. Okay, Arnold can't get the ball in. Pressure applied by Hobson on the baseline, and Arnold alertly calls another timeout. Time remaining in this basketball game, 1 minute 58 seconds. We are in regulation. 55 for Iowa, 55 for Idaho. Now this for AGI. Back to action. Hanson will inbound for the Iowa Hawkeyes on the baseline. Gets it to Arnold in the near corner. Hawkeyes tied at 55. Arnold double team. Hits Anderson. Open in the lane. 14 feet away. Can't do anything with it. Has Boyle on the right side. Back right back court for Arnold. Arnold right back court to Kevin Boyle. Between the circles for Kenny Arnold. Dribbling between two players. Goes right wing to Anderson. Right back court for Boyle. Now Arnold with the basketball near the center circle. 55 all, 136 left to go, Mac. Hawkeyes are in the four corner. Delay game going out to half court to maneuver the ball in. Bringing the wingmen. Free throw line extended. Jerry Denard drives the baseline. Draws the foul against Phil Hobson. Oh. Hobson call for the foul. And Jerry Denard... For the whole season, has shot six free throws, and he has made five of them. Not so big a fact that it's only Hobson's third foul, but with time stopped right now, Jerry Denard can go to the line and give the Iowa Hawkeyes a lead right here. He has the one and one. The din is tremendous. Shot is up. No good. The rebound, Hobson for Idaho. Let's see what Idaho tries to do with a minute 22 and the clock running here. They're going to go delay game, I'm sure of that. Owen between the circle. Rough foul line extended for Hobson. Once again, I'm wrong. They're going to run the half-court offense. Kellerman, 15 feet away. Good! And the Performing Arts Coliseum erupts. 107 left. 55 for Iowa. 57 for Idaho. Hawkeyes down by two points. They're in the forecourt with Anderson between the circles. For under a minute to go in the basketball game. Head of the circle, Kenny Arnold. Rough foul line extended. Bobby Hanson with the basketball. Spins on the dribble. Being guarded by Kellerman. Hanson looking inside. Goes left hash mark for Kenny Arnold. 44 seconds left to go in the basketball game. Arnold, head of the circle, goes to Anderson. Right side, Bobby Hanson has the base line. Puts it up and in! Bobby Hanson ties the game! 57 all. 32 seconds left to go in the basketball game. Baseline moved by Bobby Hanson. Right baseline. Went up strong. Oh, oh, my the glass. oh my goodness, my heart is fluttering. 
Everybody else's heart is fluttering here. 12,340 people in the Performing Arts Coliseum in Pullman, Washington, watching a thriller diller. 57 all, 27 seconds left to go in the basketball game. We'll return after this for American Federal. And we're back, Mac McCausland. This game is giving me butterflies. Well, it should. 57-57, the winner here goes to Provo to the regionals. The Iowa Hawkeyes will be, be very concerned about fouling. They do not want to send the Vandals to the line because all the players they'll have in there are very experienced, good free throw shooters. Would it surprise you if they tried to get Hobson on the inside and draw a foul from the Hawkeyes? No, I'm sure they'll try and work it inside to both their big people, and if it's not there, they'll kick it right back out to their good perimeter shooters, Owens and Kellerman. Owens has not had a field goal today, but he's been 12 for 12 from the line, and Kellerman has played very well with 10 points. They are delayed right now. We are tied at 57. 17 seconds left to go. Idaho has the basketball. Kellerman, near the center circle, he calls another timeout. 12 seconds remaining in our basketball game. We are still tied at 57. 12 seconds left to go. Now this for Northwestern Bell. You know, most successful business uh, Iowa Hawkeye basketball on WHO Sports Radio are Northwestern Bell, the Peaster Stations, AGI, and American Federal Savings and Loan. Mac, what did Idaho gain by calling a timeout? Well, to set up, find out what kind of defense Iowa would play, run their offensive situation. Now they will be able to dictate who they're going to have the ball, if they're going to elect to have just one person or run their just half-court offense. The Iowa Hawkeyes gave last-minute instructions to go out and make sure they get no second shots. Play back in, 12 seconds to go. Owens between the circles with the basketball. We have seven seconds. Right foul line, Kellerman reverses it for Herbert. Kellerman goes far corner for Herbert. He shoots, it's off the mark. The rebound put up by Smith, it's good! Oh, will the basket count? Will the basket count? That is the question right now. The scorer is shaking his head. I think we have overtime. I think we have overtime. We have overtime! We, do. we have overtime! The Iowa Hawkeyes are still alive! No question, it is overtime. We have not shot it. Calvin Smith putting up a rebound shot from Owens that went awry in the last seconds of the basketball game. It went through the bucket, but the horn had already gone off. Oh, oh, oh. man, oh, man. Holy cow. Don Munson is still talking to the officials, and he is discussing. George oh. Wine, the sports information director for the Iowa Hawkeyes, coming over saying, good call, good call. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so we go into overtime here. We take a minute rest. And now the Iowa Hawkeyes will be coming out for five more minutes of basketball. And, Mac, I wonder if the Iowa Hawkeyes get the tip whether they'll delay. I would have to say with this lineup, they have to definitely look for a good shot. I don't know if they'll go the four-corner delay because they don't have all their good ball handlers in there. They certainly do not have a lot of their rebounding power in there with Payne and Stokes fouled out. Carpino, the quickest player, and their point guard is fouled out. Now we the other thing to be concerned about is I don't know if they will get the tip. Uh, you now are going to have to talk and look at the people. Uh, you'll have somebody jumping, probably Jerry Denard, who is a good jumper, and we're still going with a lineup that doesn't even practice much together. You know, you're going with your two regulars of Hanson and Boyle. You've got Anderson and Denard, uh, who are substitutes, and Kenny Arnold, the regular. So you've got your two seniors there. A man who has proved time and time again to be a clutch player, Bobby Hanson, made free throws at Michigan State at Indiana, and here makes the baseline five-foot bank shot for the Hawkeyes. It's 57-57, five minutes to go. It'll be a jump ball. And that was a good call when they said no basket. Well, I wasn't really sure, but when I saw the official scorer shaking his head, I knew the Hawkeyes were still alive. Through regulation, the Hawkeyes shot 48% from the floor. Idaho shot 42%. The tip is controlled in overtime by Gordy Herbert. Gets it to Kellerman, left backcourt. 454 in the first overtime. The Vandals are going to look for the delay, which does not surprise me. Again, as we've talked, they don't probably want to get in run and gun because they are tired and have been tired. Iowa Hawkeye basketball on WHO Des Moines. Hobson in the lane. Left side, Smith. Baseline jumper, good. And the first two points of the overtime by Smith have given Idaho a two-point lead with 4.30 left in overtime number one. Now the Iowa Hawkeyes trying to counter. 
at the top of the key with Craig Anderson. Left foul line extended Bobby Hansen. Reverses it for Boyle. Deep corner. Owens inside for Anderson. Kicks it out to Arnold. He shoots. He hits. Good ball movement by the Hawkeyes. 59 all. 4-11 left in the first overtime. Boyle to Anderson. Anderson kick it back out to the wing to Kenny Arnold. Kellerman with the ball for the Idaho Vandals in the left backcourt. Hands it off for Gordy Herbert in that same left backcourt area. Now he tries to go to Smith. Ball knocked away by Denoy, but Smith jams, gets the basket, and a foul will be called, I believe, against, Go against Smith or maybe Herbert. That's right. He just ran right over Craig Anderson. Craig just stood there, took that charge. I hope he's all right. The call is against Smith, Kelvin Smith of Idaho. And he has fouled out of the basketball game. The basket counts. Our score right now is Idaho 61, Iowa 59, 354, the time remaining in overtime number one. Craig Anderson going to the line, and Craig is one for one from the free throw line. Calvin Smith fouls out with 15 points, four of them here in the overtime. At the line, Craig Anderson, Kenny Arnold coming over, wiping his brow. It's been a hard game for every Iowa Hawkeye. Three Hawkeyes have fouled out if you joined us late. Those Hawkeyes being Greg Stokes, Steve Carfino, and Michael Payne. And now the first foul out for Idaho coming in the form of Calvin Smith. At the line, Craig Anderson. One shot, puts it up. It's no good. The rebound, Kellerman for Idaho. Vandals with a two-point lead. Cross-court pass in his own zone to Owens. Owens trotting the ball up across the line against Arnold. Left side. He hits Priggy, who checked in for Smith. Now back to Owens at the head of the circle. Hands off to Kellerman, 335. Time remaining in the first overtime. Vandals with the ball in a two-point lead. Owens on the right backcourt. Dribbling the ball with his left hand. Trying to get a pick. Can't do so. Goes left hash mark now for Herbert. Back outside to Kellerman. Hawkeyes man to man. Kellerman still at the basketball, being dogged by Bobby Hansen. Right back court for Hobson between the circle. It's Owens for the Idaho Vandals. 3.09 time remaining. Idaho 61 and Iowa 59. Herbert top of the key. Right side Hobson. Right foul on extended Owens. Trots it back outside. Semi delay game. Denard almost picks the ball off from Priggy, but Priggy throws it back to Owens. And Idaho still has the ball under three minutes to go in the game. Kellerman with the ball, circling back outside against Hansen. He might drive, stops, goes left side to Owens. He throws it back outside to Kellerman. Good ball, Vandals. Uh-oh, Hobson inside. Thought he had the shot. Goes outside to Owens on the left back court. Between the circles to Kellerman. Left hash mark for Hobson. He's playing way outside. No, so I think the Idaho Vandals now have gone into their delay game. It is very delay. Preggy between the circles. Right foul on extended Kellerman. Cross court pass for Hopkins. Between the circles, Priggy to Owens. Owens with the basketball. 2-11 time remaining. Vandals have a two-point lead. Now with the basketball, Herbert on the right foul line extended. Pivoting, looking inside, and a foul will be called as Bobby Hansen cut down with an Idaho player. And Hansen was playing catch-up, got caught. Uh, right, three fouls on Bobby. Yeah. Kellerman going to line, 70% free throw shooter. So far, 10 points. And 61 two? for Idaho, 59 for the Hawkeyes. And Mac. two for three from the line so far today. First one up and in. 62 to 59 in the first overtime. 203 remaining in it. Second shot, Kellerman, good. 63 to 59. Hawkeyes have to do some quick work right here with Kenny Arnold in the right backcourt. Head of the circle, Craig Anderson. Under two minutes to go. Right foul on extended. Kenny he Arnold, meeting him post Hansen. Far side, drives the baseline, puts it up. He missed badly. The rebound brought down, and Kevin Boyle wants a foul called against the Idaho Vandal, but he won't get it, I don't believe. That'll be five on Kevin, falling out of his last game as a senior. Perhaps his last game. That's true. Todd Birkenpass will be coming in for him. The Hawkeyes will now have three guards, Arnold Birkenpass and Hansen. Bobby drove baseline, similar to the shot that he made towards the end of regulation. That time could not find the glass and laid it right over the rim area, did not draw some iron at all on it. Incredibly, Boyle sits down as the leading Hawkeye scorer unofficially for this afternoon with 10 points. Now Surprising? 
a little surprising at this point, but uh, the Hawkeyes have several people at eight and nine points, so it's been balanced scoring, and that's been the trademark all year for the Hawkeyes. The lineup for the Hawkeyes is Hobson's at the line with a one and one. Todd Birkenpost, Kenny Arnold, Jerry Denard, Craig Anderson, and Bobby Hansen. Hobson right now, the leading scorer with 17, has 18. And the Vandals starting to soak the game away at the line. 64 to 59, 150 remaining in the first overtime. The biggest thing the Hawkeyes have to do is come down and show poise and patience to get back in the game. Do not come down, take the wild shot, and lose it and turn it over back to the Vandals. Second shot also good. Hawkeyes trailing by six. Here's Kenny Arnold to Anderson, head of the circle. Arnold, right foul on extended. Birkenposs says, why not? Good! Todd Birkenposs, real quickly, cuts the Idaho Vandal lead to four points, 138 left to go in the first overtime. Birkenposs along with Denard pressing. Herbert with the basketball, double team, gets it across the line to Kellerman, underneath Friggy lays it up. He missed! Friggy missed the layup. Friggy had a he wide missed, open layup. He missed the layup, and I knocked my microphone off there for the moment. Oh, that was so easy, he missed it. And the Idaho Vandals just blow a chance, and Arnold perhaps might make a play for it, but the tip in is good. I think Jerry Denard got it. Jerry Denard on the tip in. Hawkeyes down by just two points. 65 to 63, the action wild and furious. Denard diving for a ball that falls out of bounds. Friggy went in from the left-hand side, used his right hand and caught the, the uh, crotch of the rim and just couldn't get it up above it. Oh, Hawkeyes pressing in the backcourt with Herbert. And now Kellerman in his own zone. Across the right side, down the line. Uh-oh, Hobson puts it up and in. Hobson left all alone. No basket. Charge. Jerry Gennard stood right at the free throw line as Kellerman drove, dished off. Jerry took it, got knocked down. Hobson, no basket. Hawkeyes down two, one minute to go. What a big play right there. 65 for the Idaho Vandals, 63 for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and Bobby Hansen. Regardless of the outcome, these substitutes have played very, very well. Once again, showing the type of people that Lou Olson has. All those people pay attention in practice. They learn the system. They go over the scouting reports. They know when they go into the game exactly what they have to do. Birkenpass made it a 65 to 61 basketball game with 138 left. And then a tip in by Jerry Denard. Just 30 seconds later made it 65 to 63. And then the opportunity where Hobson had to dunk it by the earlier foul and to the line now steps Jerry Denard with a one and one first shot up good one minute exactly remaining in the ball game I think we'll go back when we look at this game to the missed layup by Priggy as well which allowed the Iowa Hawkeyes to get that first basket second shot up and it is also good we have a tie at 65 a tie at 65, and we are under one minute to go in the basketball game. And it was in this first overtime, the Hawkeyes were down by six. Owens left foul line extended. To Priggy oh. and Denard fouls Priggy on the left wing. Denard says, yes, I know it. Well, if you want to look on a positive standpoint, that's Priggy. Priggy, who does not play that much. You're looking, and he is a 74% or 77% free throw shooter, but 77% in the season versus 77% in the NC2A is totally different. And Kenny Arnold and the rest of the Iowa Hawkeyes are going to make Priggy think about these foul shots coming up. Our score with 50 seconds remaining in the first overtime. The Iowa Hawkeyes 65, the Idaho Vandals 65. Stay right here on WHO Des Moines. We'll be back after this for Peaster. Mike Lee along with Mac McCausland and Pullman Washington, the winner of this basketball game faces either Oregon State or Pepperdine. Let's review what happened in the past 50 seconds. It was 65-59 Idaho. Priggy, excuse me, Birkenpost hit a basket with 138 left to go, made it 65-61. Priggy for Idaho, trying to counter on the fast break layup, missed. Iowa Hawkeyes came down, Denard on a tip and made it 65-63, and then he hit two foul shots to make it 65-65, but now Priggy at the line on the foul by Denard makes it 66-65 with 50 seconds left to go in the first overtime. Right now the Vandals are off the line, they're all back, going to play defense, see what happens with Priggy's second. Second shot, good. Give him credit, stood at the line, good rotation and shot it, knocked it down. Pete Priggy has given Idaho a two-point lead. 46 seconds left in the first overtime. Hawkeyes need to get a basket here for the tie. Birkenposs, head of the circle, right foul line extended for Arnold, down low, Hanson, right up and in. BH took it again, right on the block, spin move, up, 
hit the glass, knocked it in. Bobby Hansen. 28 seconds left to go in the first overtime. Idaho now with a chance to take a two-point lead with Owens. Going left foul line extended for Herbert. Back to Owens. 19 seconds. You know what they're going for right here. Owens between the circles calls the timeout. And with 15 seconds left to go in the first overtime, we are tied at 67. We could have a situation once again where the Hawkeyes have to give up a last second shot. We'll see what happens here after this for AGI. And we're back at the Performing Arts Coliseum in Pullman, Washington. Mike Lee along with Mac McCausland. The final 15 seconds of the first overtime. Idaho's Vandals have the ball. Owens in the right backcourt. Leaves it off for Kellerman. Head of the circle. Eight seconds left to go in the game. The far corner. Priggy back outside to Herbert. Right side Kellerman. 50 feet away. It is no good. And it falls in with no time remaining on the clock. At the buzzer. The ball hit the front of the rim. Went up. Hit the back of the rim. Rolled and went down. It's good. Idaho advances to Provo. The Hawkeyes suffered defeat. But I'll tell you, you've got to look at those substitutes. They did a tremendous, tremendous job to put the Hawkeyes in a position to even have their chance to go into overtime or to win the game. A heartbreaking loss for the Hawkeyes in a lot of ways, similar to the heartbreaking losses that ended the Big Ten season. No team deserves to lose as many heartbreaking games in one season. Well, certainly not the way this game was played. The Hawkeyes down by 11 points. Pressure early in the second half, got them back into the game. And then as the filing situations took place, you have Stokes leave early, Carvino leave, Payne leave, Boyle leave. Then you give, bring in seldom used substitutes, and certainly with no tournament experience to speak of, with Birkenpass, Anderson, and Denard, and have those people distinguish themselves very, very well. Those three people scored 15 points in the second half and in the overtime to carry the Hawkeyes to have the opportunity to win the game. But Idaho is an excellent, excellent ball team. They have five people that are extremely quick that can play the game. The only question I have is when you get into the NC2A and you are going to play two games within 48 hours of each other, how long you can go with five people and not be extremely tired when you get to that second game. We'll be back to wrap things up on this final Iowa Hawkeye basketball broadcast of the 1981-82 season after this word from American Federal. Performing Arts Coliseum in Pullman, Washington. The Idaho Vandal fans still celebrating. 69 to 67. Kellerman shot from 15 feet on the right side of the key falling in the last seconds. If it didn't fall, I imagine that Gordy Herbert with his hand up around the rim could have tapped it in anyway. He was definitely right there in position. He was on the inside position area. And as the ball went up, he had the opportunity to tap it. In fact, I thought maybe for a second he might do that and save the Hawkeyes but he stayed away from the rim and the offensive goaltending let the ball drop if it had the opportunity and it went down a good basket by Kellerman and as you look back you have to look at the two off guards who played very well in pressure situations for both teams Brian Kellerman and uh, Iowa's Bobby Hansen two of them played very well in pressure situations got the baskets that the team needed and again I just gotta go back to the Iowa Hawkeyes when you lose four people four of your top six and you're still able to stay in a game with a number six or eighth rated team, depending on what polls you want to look at. Playing virtually a home game. V very true. And still stay right with them. I just got to take my hats off to the coaching staff, Coach Olson, Rosborough, uh, Burmeister, and Thompson for having the team ready, having the substitutes be aware and know what is going on at all times. Because I'll tell you, there's tendencies on other teams that if you're the ninth, 10th, and 11th man, you really don't pay that much attention because you haven't been used throughout the year. And all of a sudden, when you're called on, you don't respond because you haven't taken care of your homework. The Iowa Hawkeye team took care of their homework. Their people came in and did very, very well. And it's a commendable job. Unfortunately, it ends in heartbreak, not only for this particular game, but for the season. And now you look, there were four Big Ten teams. It is now down to one as we got a final where Minnesota did win today. I believe it was 61-62. And the Midwest lost another team, DePaul, lost to Boston College. 82-75, so DePaul draws that first round by and loses again for the third time in three years. So we have a few more scores to pass along. Kansas State downing Arkansas 65-64. Virginia nipping Tennessee 54-51. Villanova in three overtimes, getting rid of Northeastern 76-72.
And as you say, Minnesota goes down the tubes. Our final score here for this, e for this afternoon, rather, was Idaho 69 and the Iowa Hawkeyes 67. Now, before we turn it back to the studio, a few final words from Mac McCausland looking at the scoring, looking at the performance for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and then I'd like to add a few final remarks before we send it back to